Howdy, AP Precal. It is Ms. Kosh, and today we are looking at um, topic 3.1, periodic phenomena. Um, this is how AP introduces the whole idea of trig functions, and um, gets to, they would they did this even before the unit circle. Um, but I didn't want to do it that way. So we kind of already have some of these ideas figured out, but um, we'll we'll jump right in and and and. Um, and build off of what we already have and, and use what, they, what they've given us. Um, okay, so a, a function is periodic. Um, the, when, when a function is periodic, it, um, it tells us that the input, as the input value increases, the output value um, demonstrates a repeating pattern. Okay, so it has some sort of pattern that as you move along in the x direction, your y value is, is, is following a particular pattern. Um, this pattern occurs over successive equal width intervals. Okay, so the pattern doesn't get to like get fatter and skinnier as it goes. It's the same thing the whole time. Um, the graph of a periodic relationship can be constructed from a graph of a single cycle. So in this case, we'd have a single cycle where it starts at the top, it comes down to the bottom, and it comes back to the top. That would be one cycle. We're going to learn in a minute that we call that one period of the graph. Okay, which is why they're periodic, because it. Um, it has a repeating, the one period, um, we're going to say this later, but one period is how long it takes it to do everything it's going to do. Okay, so the first example, they're telling us a blade of a box fan rotates in a clockwise direction and completes two rotations every second. So what that means is it starts here, it does one rotation, it does a second rotation within one second. So, wow, that's tiny, I can't see that. I think that says time one, which is, um, so that would be one second, which means that it was it's done... Um, since it's done two rotations in one second, it's done a rotation in half a second. I think this is labeled as 0.25, 1 fourth. Okay, so here's 3 fourths. Um, and then it tells us that point A is located at the tip of the fan blade, so it's at the top. Um, at time zero, the blade, the tip is 18 inches from the floor. So this height right here, this is at time zero, it is 18 inches high. It's a little small, but hopefully you can see that. And then when it tells us when the point A is at its lowest point, the fan blade is two inches from the floor. So this is at time, well, we just discovered what these x values were, or theta values, or t values, or whatever the, the independent variable is. And this is one fourth, and its height is two. And so over here, we are at one half of a second, and we are at back to that height of 18. Okay. Um, so they told us to label the coordinates, and we did. There we go. Okay, so the period of the function is the smallest pos positive k value such that f of x plus k equals f of x. Okay, so basically what they're saying is if we take our graph and shift it a certain amount, it will look, it will map on exactly to what we started with. And so what is that amount that it can, um, that we can shift this graph? So if you notice here, in this particular graph, I can shift... Well, if I shift this point to the left to uh, one half of a unit, I will end up at this point right there. So the period of this particular graph, um, its period was one half. Because this, I can say, um, if f of x is given, if f of x is that graph, then I can say that... Um, this is f of x plus one half, which would take this point, move it one half to here. So since it was at positive one half, it would move it, uh, minus one half would move it to zero. And so this, this maximum value here maps onto that maximum value there when we shift it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, a periodic function is shown below. What is the period of the function? Well, so what does it do? It starts at the top, it goes down, it comes back to the top. This seems to be one, two, three, four. Uh, so I would say that it's done everything it's going to do by four. Uh, graph another cycle. Okay, well, let's see. These seem to be um, so something like this. Let's try and draw straight lines. These appear to be straight. I will caution you, we're going to do a whole lot of functions like this. this is, these are not straight lines. Um, and these are straight lines. So this is periodic, but it's not going to be... Um, what we study a lot, um, and I will say I have taken off points when a kid is supposed to graph this, but they give me something like that. So be careful what is curved and what isn't curved. If, okay. Graph another cycle on the interval. Oh, we just did. Okay. 
find f of 10. Okay, so here we see this was 4, this would be 8. So notice this was 2, this is 6. So 4 units later, we're going to be back down here at negative. I think that's a 2, but man, my eyes, you guys, don't ever get old. Um, anyway, I'm not that old, but it's a dumb game. And okay, at f of 12, well, so at 4, at 0, at 4, at 8, at 12, we're going to be here at 0. Good. Okay. I think we will stop at this point. This was, um, these were the notes I wanted to do on section 3.1. And then in the same day, I'm going to continue and go into 3, 4, um, and 3, 5. Um, but I'll break that into different videos. So come back and find those videos.